the farmer's ride today um, fairly quickly but um, hopefully enough as a useful revision tool. Um, I've put a star on this slide because if I had the choice um, out of the cluster of the 15 poems um, I would choose this poem if I could. Obviously the question has to fit it, um, it has to make sense but if, if it did this would be my choice of poem to write about. So this is my favourite one from that cluster. Okay, so go through reading of the poem and what happens in the poem um, two key context points to get you some AO3 marks um, the most important feelings um, in the poem and then um, lastly my favourite quote to analyse the language of to get you some marks for AO2 ok so we start with the reading of the poem um, I'm not a man but um, just imagine that I am Three summers since I chose a maid. Too young, maybe, but more's to do at harvest time than bide and woo. When us was wed, she turned afraid of love and me and all things human. Like the shut of a winter's day, her smile went out and twadden to woman, more like a little frightened fay. One night in the fall, she runned away. Out among the sheep, Irby, they said, should properly have been a bed. But sure enough, she wasn't there lying awake with her wide brown stare so over seven acre field and up along across the down we chased her flying like a hare before our lanterns to church town all in a shiver and a scare we caught her fetched her home at last and turned the key upon her fast she does the work about the house as well as most but like a mouse Happy enough to chat and play with birds and rabbits and such as they, so long as men folk keep away. Not near, not near, her eyes beseech, when one of us comes within reach. The women say that beasts in stall look round like children at her call. I've hardly heard her speak at all. Shy as a leveret, swift as he straight and slight as a young larch tree sweet as the first wild violets she to her wild self but what to me the short days shorten and the oaks are brown the blue smoke rises to the low grey sky one leaf in the still air falls slowly down a magpie's spotted feathers lie on the black earth spread white with rime the berries redden up to christmas time What's Christmas time without there be some other in the house than we? She sleeps up in the attic there alone, poor maid. Tis but a stare betwixt us. Oh, my God, the down, the soft young down of her, the brown, the brown of her, her eyes, her hair, her hair. Okay, so what's it about? Pretty long poem, um, and this is the, the narrative, I guess. So the speaker is a farmer, um, a rural farmer, who um, is presented speaking in a dialect, words like runned away rather than ran away. Um, and we hear that he chose a young bride and he's narrating the events of his marriage after three years. Try not to get fixated on her age. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is that he recognises that she was too young. Too young, maybe. Um, but he was busy. He'd got other things to do. Um, and so he didn't really spend a lot of time getting to know her. So the relationship doesn't start off very well. And after a short period of time, she runs away from him. She, she clearly doesn't want to be with him. Eventually, she's caught and they lock her up. And then we hear that she does the domestic duties around the house. Um, but she's like a mouse, so she's like small and scared and she won't communicate with him and she wants nothing to do with him as his wife. So they're sort of coexisting, but they're not living as husband and wife, which I think is why she's referred to as the bride in the title. Then we get this sort of slow movement of time where he talks about the seasons changing um, and the farmer begins to feel more frustrated. He wants a proper wife and children. He particularly reflects on, you know, it's Christmas time without children. So he's starting to feel that frustration. He chose a bride, he wants a wife, but for whatever reason, this marriage isn't working. Um, and then in the final stanza of the poem, there is a strong suggestion 
that he decides to consummate his marriage. Now, consummate is a word that we use when you have sex after being married. Um, so he decides after a period of time that as is his right at the time that he is going to have sex with his wife, regardless of how she feels about it. We can infer how she feels about it, but, but we don't get her perspective. Um, kind of don't, get, don't get a first person perspective from the bride. I think we can work out what she's feeling but we don't get that perspective. Okay. So key context. This was written in the 19th century, um, and at this time marriages might not all be, you know, strictly arranged, but often they were organised to be valuable for the family or convenient for the family, and love wasn't necessarily a key factor in who was chosen to sort of be married um it wasn't sort of the driving focus it was often about something that would benefit the family in some way shape or form um mew um is writing sort of her lifetime is during the suffragette movement um so it's a time where women are trying to fight for equality and she would have been very aware of that as a poet who decided to not marry um, and not have children um she would have probably been keenly aware of the suffragette movement um Women's right to vote was in 1928, um, or, or women could vote in 1928, which is the year that she died. Um, but I do think she is trying to put across a comment on Victorian patriarchy, particularly in these sort of smaller rural communities that maybe weren't very progressive at the time. Okay, so the feelings and ideas. There are three because of the length of the poem, um, two for the speaker, one for the bride. So we'll start here with the speaker. The speaker feels frustrated. Um, we can definitely sense that at various points throughout the poem. Um, I've hardly heard her speak at all. Um, an irritation that the bride connects more with animals and not with him. She won't, you know, she's not only not his wife, like she won't even communicate with him. And there's definitely um, a sense of frustration coming in there. Um, but what to me, he seems to really reflect on how she sees him and their relationship and wanting that, them to be closer. Um, and, and, and that's that definite frustration and irritation that's growing throughout the poem. He also desires her um, very, very clearly at the end of the poem, that final stanza where he talks about her being just a staircase away and lists some of the qualities he likes about her. Um, but also just right from the very beginning, three summers since I chose a maid, there was something about her that he desired, that he wanted. And that is why he's chosen her, even when he's aware that she's not quite ready. Um, he, he acknowledges that she's too young, but he, he wants her. And then in that sort of final line, some of the listing of the things that he finds attractive about her. So particularly her eyes and her hair. Um, earlier in that same stanza there's that oh my god moment where he sort of thinks about her in that way um i think it's important to understand that a modern interpretation of this is very very different potentially to a social interpretation at the time it's written um this is awful now you know we're much better in terms of consent and and those ideas as we should be but at the time, there, there would be an argument that, you know, when he marries her, she becomes his possession. We can see it in the title, The Farmer's Bride. She belongs to him. Um, and so we can sort of maybe um, understand that, that there's an attempt to be sympathetic on some level because he waits for several years. Um, but I think it's one of those things that we would see differently in different time points. And then another one, just from her perspective, I think there are other feelings that we can see that she has throughout the poem, but I think she definitely feels afraid. Um, I picked a couple of quotes, but there are loads of other ones. So when us was when she turned afraid immediately, um, as soon as they get married, she's scared of love and me and all things human, that it isn't just that she's afraid of him, that she's afraid of this world that allows her to you know, be given to this man. Um, and then more like a frightened little fae. So a fae is... Um, another word for a fairy so she's being compared to this sort of scared mythical creature um and then one night in the fall she runned away um so so afraid is she that she's desperate to to get away from him and then they chase her down 
the AO2 quote that I would choose, we chased her flying like a hare. Um, so it's a zoomorphic simile, so zoomorphism where um, something's compared to an animal, um, and, and obviously the simile with that, that comparison. That's a little bit. Um, looking at the first part, we chased her, so we've got the collective pronoun we, so a group of people versus the singular pronoun her um, and it definitely creates this sense that they are like a pack of predators chasing down this singular prey she seems incredibly outnumbered and incredibly vulnerable of course she doesn't stand a chance against this group of individuals that are hunting her um, I think this is where Mew is trying to show us how society would have agreed with the farmer's views we chased her a group of people agreeing with him earlier on in the poem when she first disappears they're telling him where she's likely to be they're on his side um i think we're supposed to empathize with the bride um i think most people do um but she's showing that actually society would have actually been on the farmer's side she's his bride um, she shouldn't run away from him, she should just sort of accept um, that wifedom and maternity and all those things because that's just an expectation of women. We've also got the verb flying, we chased her flying like a hare but hares don't fly. Um, so this verb is there to hyperbolize how fast she's trying to get how desperately she's trying to get away from him she's trying to run really 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 fast to get away she's absolutely terrified but it also probably links to where she's described as being like a fae being like a fairy um, and emphasizes sort of her qualities being different um she's not ready for the, for this and and this is another way in which she's presented as being sort of different to a typical wife or what we might have expected So the zoomorphic noun, lots and lots about the hair, um, some of it sort of linked to one another, but all worth sort of writing about in as much detail as you can. Um, so they're wild animals. We don't domesticate hares. We have domestic rabbits, but they're a little bit different to rabbits. Um, they're incredibly shy animals. You could go, you know, your lifetime and never see a hare. They're, they're really shy. They do not like to interact with humans. Um, they they don't have that interest you know you could you could interact with a rabbit but that's not the case with with hares they're very very wild they're not domesticated because of those qualities they were often prized by hunters they were particularly valuable and i think this relates to the bride that she's seen as valuable in some way he chose her um that she must be have some qualities maybe she's particularly attractive or she's got some qualities that he's very very drawn to and he sort of sees her as valuable in that sense. Hairs typically symbolise spring. Um, I think if we looked at a person's life in terms of the seasons, the spring is obviously very early on, would be sort of the beginning, your, part of your childhood and I think that's me trying to tell us um, that the bride is too young as the farmer realises himself. She is too young um, and that she's just a child. I think there's a suggestion that because she communicates well with animals that they're compared to her children that she probably could have maternal qualities she maybe could have been a good wife she's just too young um, and that links to the the, the associations between spring and, and hares they're seen as a symbol of fertility um, i guess it relates to rabbits as well because they can have a large number of young in a short period of time um, and obviously this idea of fertility and wanting to have a child is very present in the poem um, they were thought, I think, during the Victorian era to be able to reproduce without sex. Um, and so that idea of kind of sex not being present in the poem until that strong suggestion at the end um, maybe emphasises that. I don't think she, well, I'm, I'm quite sure she doesn't want to have sex. Um, so that idea that they were maybe sort of asexual could possibly link to that. Okay, also she's described later on as a leveret, which is a baby hare. So we've got this idea that she's actually reducing down. She gets smaller as the poem progresses rather than growing into wifedom. She actually shrinks down away from it. Um, she's also compared to a mouse, again, smaller than a hare. This experience is making her lesser um, and, and obviously 
that's probably linked to how afraid she is. And then lastly, hair is um, a homophone, so a word that sounds the same but has a different meaning um, of the word hair, like the hair on your head. Um, and so we've got that link to towards the end of the poem where he starts to link list some of the things that he's attracted to about her and one of the things that he likes about her is is her hair and so we could also add that at the end of our AO2 but lots and lots to say about quite a simple quote fairly straightforward to remember but loads and loads to say and that's really what we're looking for to get high grades.